Affinity Photo for iPad has a full set of adjustment layers, which you can use to modify your images non-destructively. First, I'll start with a very straightforward modification of brightness and contrast. I'll open the Adjustments panel by tapping here. Then I'll tap to add a Brightness Contrast Adjustment Layer. You'll see various options for this adjustment appear on a dialog near the bottom right. I can tap and drag on the radial sliders to modify the adjustment parameters. So I can drag right on brightness to increase it, then drag left to decrease it. I'll do the same for contrast, dragging right to increase it. Layer opacity can be controlled directly on the dialog as well, which determines the overall blending strength of the layer. Decreasing it will gradually lessen the effect of the adjustment, but I'll bring it back up to 100% for now. To switch to the Layers panel, you will see that this brightness contrast adjustment sits in the document layer stack, rendering above the layers beneath it. This is a non-destructive approach to editing. I can hide the layer by tapping its visibility icon. Then I can tap it again to show the layer and reveal its effect. If I tap away to a different layer, the adjustment dialog will disappear. At any time, however, I can select the adjustment layer again to bring the dialog back up and adjust the settings until I'm happy with the effect. Finally, this layer can also be deleted from the layer stack, which will remove its effect entirely. Adjustment layers can also be masked so they apply selectively to areas of the image or document. For example, on the Adjustments panel, I will add a Curves Adjustment layer. I'll tap here to access what is called the Spline Graph. This represents the tonal range of the document, and I can tap drag to create a node and gradually push the shadow and midtone detail up. This reveals more detail in the darker areas of the image, but I might not want the waterfall area to be brightened. I'll tap anywhere to close the spline graph. Then I'll select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel on the left, and the idea is to paint away on the document to stop the curves adjustment from rendering on certain areas. But for this, I'll need an appropriate brush. On the brushes panel, I'll switch the category to masking, and I'll pick a large, soft, round brush. Now on the context toolbar at the top, I'll just tap here and set my current color to pure black. Then I'll paint over the waterfall areas. Notice that they become darker again. I have effectively stopped the adjustment from rendering where I have painted black. Now at the moment this result doesn't look very good because the difference between the two areas is too great. So to remedy this, I might go back into the spline graph and just reduce and tweak the curves graph slightly. Now, on the layers panel, if I tap on the three dots to access layer options, I can toggle solo mode here. This produces a grayscale representation of the adjustment mask. Areas of white are where the adjustment will render, and areas of black are where they will not render. If I switch my active brush color to pure white, then paint over these black areas to remove them, the adjustment will now render over the entire document. And if I disable solo mode, notice that the waterfall now looks bright again. On this next example, I'll show you the channel mixer adjustment. Rather than manipulating channel data destructively, we can use an adjustment layer to modify it non-destructively. I'll tap here to add a channel mixer adjustment from the adjustments panel. Then I'll do a simple red and blue channel swap. I'm currently on the red channel here, and I need to set its red contribution to zero. But instead of tap dragging, a more precise approach is to simply tap the radial slider, and I can then type zero in and tap OK. Then I'll tap on the blue contribution and set it to 100. I'll switch across to the blue channel and do the opposite. So I'll bring the blue contribution down to zero and the red contribution up to 100. I've now performed the red and blue channel swap and my infrared image has come to life with vibrant red and blue tones. I could follow up this channel mixer adjustment with a selective color adjustment. 
This adjustment works on a CMYK color model and lets you take a specific color range, such as reds, and modify the contribution of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black to this range. For example, reducing magenta gives the leaves a yellow muted tone. I could reset this adjustment by tapping on the reset button here and instead increase the yellow contribution to 100, which is more subtle but adds a yellow tint to the red leaves. By the way, I can also maximize my working space by tapping on the icon at the top right here, which in this scenario will hide the entire user interface apart from the adjustment dialog. I'll switch across to the cyan's range and I can increase cyan, then decrease yellow to give the sky a purer light blue tone. Again, because adjustment layers are non-destructive, I can move to the layers panel and hide the selective color adjustment to see the before and the after. Finally, I'll show you an example of how you can combine adjustment layers with blend modes to extend their usefulness. I'll add a black and white adjustment to this document. Then I'll move to the layers panel and tap the three dots here to access the layer options. The blend mode defaults to normal. I'll tap it and I can now drag to move through the various blend modes. I'll choose Luminosity. Luminosity is a weighted calculation of the red, green, and blue channel information, and when combined with a black and white adjustment, it allows us to control the brightness of specific color ranges. For example, if I reduce blue and cyan on the adjustment dialog, this will darken the sky, creating more contrast between the foreground and background. I can also control the intensity of the red vehicle light trails using the red contribution. A lower value will saturate the trails, whereas a high value will make them more intense, but reduce the saturation. Finally, I can also reduce yellow to darken the building detail. Doing so unfortunately makes this street lamp look unpleasant, but this is no problem because we can non-destructively mask the black and white adjustment away from this area. So. I'll select the paintbrush tool, and I'm already set to the soft round brush I selected earlier. So all I need to do is reduce the brush width on the left here. I can then paint into the bright area of the light source to restore it. I'll come back out and zoom to fit by tapping the magnifying glass icon up here. And finally, I can experiment with opacity to determine the overall strength of the effect I'm trying to achieve. And that was a look at how to use adjustment layers in Affinity Photo for iPad. I hope you found it helpful, and thank you for watching.